Now, I want to talk about looking after family. Now, the first thing is my UK side is not really an issue uh, because we have free health service, or should I say, I paid enough into the health system as, as my father, um, as well as serving with the armed forces as well. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, we've paid enough into the UK system. My in-laws aren't so lucky. Um, here in Spain, we're okay as well because of the social security payments I'm making. So the only concern is our family back in the Philippines. And I say family because they're my family um, as much as my wife's is the, in the way I see, my, see family. Um, now... This also goes on with the, you know, because I know somebody brought up recently about oh, looking after your wife's parents. We we function as a unit. Um, and when I say that, it's basically we look after each other. You know, if I'm sick, my mother-in-law looks after me, my father-in-law, my wife. The same way if anybody else is ill, we look after each other. It's what, I mean, I got in a debate with somebody before about um, the socialist, uh, socialism on a, a fishing village because at a fishing village size it works because everybody fixes the boats fixes the nets does everything together and shares the catch because you work together you know that social aspect where it starts falling apart is when you start getting into cities and stuff because it becomes mine this is mine this is yours you know i own the nets you own the fishing boats the bank owns both of us <laughs> it's it's that sort of thing but as a family we function as an entire group and i know it's, it sort of goes against the grain with a lot of expats to say the um siblings and aren't you a problem when you get into education and stuff i agree with you because predominantly i find a lot of people waste other people's money um i've heard more expats complain about wasting money on their wives, nieces, nephews, cousins, whatever, for education than anything else. Um, that, I would say, is not your burden. I wouldn't get involved in it. Now, where things, from my personal point, is your wife's um, parents' health care, you know, her siblings' health care, um, may do. You know, the parents... Certainly, because if you want your wife to be moppy and down with you because their parents are sick or whatever, then go ahead, don't help, because you, they'll also remember you, that you never helped as well, which is never good for a marriage. Um, from my own viewpoint, my in-laws look after me, I look after them, that's it. Um, we've had a bit of a scare this week where my mother-in-law is currently in a hospital um but it's like whatever it takes you know if it's a case of well we, we've already sent money for the medical care but if it was something more serious like operations then i may have to pause pain and go back to work to help fund making sure that my mother-in-law is okay now some people might think that's a bit extreme helping out family. family's family um it's, I think this is where people's different they have different interpretations and how they look after each other, but that's the way I do it. Um, it's a bit like Typhoon High End when I gave away all my profits for the year <laughs> um, to for the disaster relief that we did with direct intervention. We took the food and resources to the people. We didn't rely on politicians and everything to line their pockets with selling our. Um, products we, we took them to the people that needed them with family you know we look after each other so you know it is important you look after your in-laws etc but only to a certain degree you're not there to carry them through life you you know in an emergency i would say help but on a day-to-day -day basis um i mean we look after our in-laws by we generate help generate businesses with them so as such, they're content. They, you know, they can retire. You know, our apartments are there. Um, we've got somebody there at the moment that's coming from Taiwan. Um, we got somebody arriving on the first week of. We got 
first week of December and somebody else arriving in December, uh, January. So the, the, it's not the first of December. They've got two people arriving in January. Um, so the whole point is the, there is a steady income there anyway. But the whole point is my mother-in-law's got the store. She runs the store. My father-in-law runs our loan company. They have incomes they're generating themselves. And this is why when you first go to the Philippines, it's worth seeing if there is something that somebody can do to support themselves. Even if you put the initial capital in and get nothing back, the whole point is you're creating self-sufficiency for them, which means people don't become a burden to you, but also you gain respect and they also have the respect and dignity of standing on their own two feet. And long term, everybody's happy. Um, yeah, just hoping my mother-in-law is back to normal tomorrow because um, it's a bit of a down because we had quite a hard month this month with the I mean the ITV was a bit of a upper but then again we're now on a downer with worrying about our uh, well my wife's mother so anyway thanks for watching. Yeah.